Today we're going to learn how to secure information in our Bubble database. Uh, this is one strategy you can use when you have a piece of text that's very sensitive, such as someone's social security number, uh, and you can encrypt this information and then store that in your database. I'm going to preface this tutorial by saying that I'm not uh, financially or legally responsible for uh, a breach in information uh, in your database or your application uh, because you will be responsible ultimately uh, for the user data that you're collecting in your site. Now let's continue and discuss the strategy that we're going to use. So within Bubble, there is a plugin and uh, it's really handy. It's called this AES256 Encrypt and Decrypt. So let's discuss what AES256 is really briefly. It is a way for us to take a plain piece of text, store it in a really long, really difficult to guess string of of code and then there's only one way for us to unlock that code easily and that's having the passcode that we've created that only we know or people that we trust will know uh, and you can see down here the possible number of combinations that someone will have to guess or a computer will have to guess to unlock the uh, unlock your information and it's your possible combinations are 1.1 times 10 to the 77th power so that's insane and it's a very secure way to store text information. Uh, let's get this plugin. So you'll want to click on add plugins and search for AES. You will find the AES 256 encrypt and decrypt plugin. So click on install. Now there's this uh, area in here called passphrase. So in here you'll want to enter in a secure passphrase. However you decide to come up with the password, I'd recommend that you make it at least 16 digits long, include numbers, uppercase, lowercase, letters, and special characters. Uh, and I've done that for you right here just by clicking this button, generate a secure password. It'll generate a random password for you. You can click right here to copy the passcode uh, and you want to paste that into here and paste the same passphrase into the development version and the live version. The encrypt and decrypt plugin comes with two actions, AES-256 encrypt and AES-256 decrypt. So what an action is, is when we go into the workflow section uh, and we have these triggers in here, we can click here and these are the actions. So if we search for AES-256, we can see there's an AES-256 encrypt action and an AES-256 decrypt action. So we wanna use the encrypt action every time that we save someone's information or record the sensitive information that we that uh, we want to record so in our case we'll just we'll this first thing that we're going to do let's just imagine that this is the trigger that we have uh, we'll say in our in the example that we have here we someone enters their social security number clicks on save and that's the trigger that sets off this action uh, but we'll just set it up so that I uh, set it up again from scratch. So search for AES-256, encrypt, whatever the value the user has entered in, just specify the input uh, that they're entering that into or whatever the value is. And now you, to save it, it's actually uh, a fairly simple action. So just figure out how you're gonna save that information, where you wanna save it, and what object in the database, uh, what field. And once you found out the field, you want to save that piece of that this piece of encrypted code in. You just click here, uh, click result of step one encrypts encrypted, and now it's going to save the code uh, of that uh, basically save that encrypted code. So then, when we want to decrypt the code, we're going to you need to use another trigger again, and uh, you would want to typically uh, you could there's a few ways that you can do this, and one way. Uh, if you if you just want to, for example, every time you basically just want to encrypt the code, decrypt the code every time the user's logged in and visits this page, you can use a pages loaded action like we have right here. So when the page is loaded, okay, decrypt the information, or and you can say something like page is loaded and the current user is logged in, okay, we'll decrypt the information. And to do that, again, we just search for decrypt, and then we find the particular piece of information that we want to decrypt, so security number. Um, we'll just search for a random social security number and pull up the encrypted code. Uh, and then to actually decrypt it, uh, we have done that. So now we just want to display the information on the page because remember we can't, we're not saving the decrypted information. Uh, so we need to display it somewhere on the page. And the way that we can do this is by creating a group on the page 
And uh, let's just imagine this is where we're going to display the social security number or whatever the secure information is. Click on type of content text. So now uh, you want to go in on the second step here. You want to just search for display data in a group and click on that. So then we'll click on group text and we've created this group text and the data to display is a result of step one decrypts value. So now we can display the decrypted information right into here. And then we'll want to also add a piece of text, for example, and say parent groups text. So now this is the, um, we could just make it easier to label this as decrypted text. And that's it. You are now able to save that information and display it. Let's just go through the exercise uh, that we have here on the page to watch it happen in action. So remove this and I'm going to say three, four, three, ba, da, ba. this isn't my real number, of course. Um, and we'll click here on save. It is a data. It's also, uh, as a workflow, it takes time to run. So I really don't recommend that you encrypt everything in your database. That will be really inefficient. Just encrypt the information that is especially sensitive. That would be my recommendation for you. Also, um, it's worth noting that Bubble is encrypting your inf any information that you've added into your Bubble database. Even if you have it, just all you you just save the actual number. It's still gonna um, you're it's still encrypted by Bubble themselves when you're not accessing that information, like on the page somewhere else or something, or showing it. Uh, as long as you've defined your privacy rules which now we're going to move into the next point that we're going to cover because it's not just an, it's not enough for us just to encrypt the information and assume that that's a high level of security so i'm just going to cover two really quick things that you can also do uh, aside from generating the really strong password that you will add in here don't use this as an example you definitely don't want to use those passcode so and obviously you don't want to share this passphrase with anyone uh, especially if you're saving really sensitive information in your database. So what you want to do is, is uh, just make sure that you have a, you're using a big secure password on your actual bubble account. Make sure that your app is private and by default, it's going to be private, but you can see here, you can set it to private uh, and the settings in general, you can set it to private. Everyone can view, everyone can edit, just keep it private, uh, especially if you've got that kind of information. Um, and the final thing is the privacy settings and the data. So we don't want, we even don't want people to access the social security number, uh, strings that are encrypted. And so we can add another layer of security by having this, um, having these privacy rules. And what these, what this does is it makes it so that someone that knows some, a little bit of programming, they can't just go to your website and see all the inform all the entries in your database in here. So if someone visits your website right now and you don't have any rules defined for your different objects in the database, anyone that knows a little bit of programming can easily discover these, these numbers or whatever else you have saved in your database, whether that's like a list of emails, you know, other stuff that you really just don't want the wrong person to see. So going back into the privacy section in here, the social security number is the object that we want to uh, restrict access to. So we'll define a new role to restrict the access. And I'm just going to say the, the, we're going to say owner. Okay. And that's going to be our particular example. So you can define different rules based on who this person is And the when section is where you define who, well, who is this person. And so we can say when the current user is, um, when we can actually say when this social security numbers creator is the current user. So that means that they entered the social security number and they say that entry in the day in your database. Well then, okay, let them see that information. Now, everyone else, we want to don't let them view all the fields. Don't let them find it in the search. Don't let them view the attached files. Just don't show it to anyone else. So now you've added the second layer of security and you have a pretty secure system now for storing that information. So I strongly encourage you to check out our website 
at newagedevelopment.bubbleapps.io. The link will be down below this video. And create an account on our website. You can access our private forum where we regularly visit to answer questions about bubble development to help you get unstuck if you get stuck and you have a bug in your website or your app. Or if you're looking for advice on getting clients as a web developer, we also talk about that. Uh, anything related to bubble development, you'll find in there. And the goal of this website is to turn you into an expert uh, and give you the tools that you need and the skills to be able to build any kind of website or application that you want uh, online and uh, be able to, you can unleash your creativity online. That's our goal. So definitely want to see you there. And I'm looking forward to seeing you there.